valleys in the forest you'll find two lovely men Lewis and Clark The Lost Journal Nature Magazine's latest expose, Lewis and Clark Expedition. Now, it's widely thought that the Lewis and Clark Expedition is really a matter solely of fact. After all, the facts in the case are fairly well understood. Lewis and Clark left from Philadelphia in 1803 and returned in 1806 after having searched in vain for three years for the Northwest Passage. Their journey was difficult, costing several lives and huge amounts of money, but it was also extremely profitable in the sense that it allowed later migration towards the West. Of course, the Lewis and Clark Expedition is so important and so essential to the understanding of America that it's made required material in all high school curricula. Clark, we must be getting close to the ocean now. I can feel the cool ocean air on my face, Meriwether. Aye, I just hope we do not encounter any beasts on our voyage. Let's keep our eyes open. They could be anywhere. I am now recreating and retaking the exact passage that was made by Lewis and Clark some 200 years ago. These great American founders made their discoveries on the basis of the instructions of a president, and by the records that they kept, we were able to perfectly reconstruct the exact path they took through this forest. This primitive wooden fortress, constructed of the very cedar of these woods, was one of the very first structures to be erected along the passageway of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. It was important for both the storage of food as well as military purposes, and guarded and resupplied travelers on the only known passage to the western United States. Did you hear that? I did. It must be some sort of strange Pacific creature. Let's keep our eyes open. Can't be too sure. Although nearly two centuries have passed since the historic journey of Lewis and Clark, there are still some unresolved mysteries relating to their story. One of these most interesting mysteries relates to a particular two-week period of time during which the explorers kept no journal records. This is extremely unusual considering the fact that they were generally very meticulous in the maintenance of their journals. Only recently have some facts begun to come to light about what may have happened during this lost time. I hold in my very hand the journal which contains the pages that describe what happened during those mysterious two weeks. Upon these pages, first-person evidence exists describing what Lewis and Clark did during those two weeks of their expedition. September 14th of the year 1806. Yesterday, Clark sighted majestic goals on the horizon. I believe we are nearing the ocean after almost three years of voyage. Today we encountered a great river, and being unable to ford it, we hewed logs into simple rafts in the manner of the natives. Meriwether Lewis In the early 1990s, the last lost journal of Lewis and Clark was discovered. This journal, journal chronicled how they had spent their mysterious two weeks. Now, of course, Lewis and Clark discovered thousands of species that were unknown to old Europe, but most significant of these was the flu. Look, there's a creature in the wood. There's something there. What is that strange beast we've been seeing? It looks like some sort of cross between a horse and a gorilla. I know, and it's tall. It's so strange. It's like, fluth, fluth. We must call this beast a fluth. A fluth. We're not even a fluth. We'll write it down in our diaries when we find camp somewhere. Yeah. Lewis and Clark were certainly some of the greatest naturalists of their time. They were experts in the taxonomic fields involved in classifying organisms. However, they still lacked the expensive and difficult scientific research 
needed to accurately categorize and describe such unique organisms as the fluke. Many of the great challenges arose from the fact that the fluke was absolutely unknown to Western medical science. However, they were able to classify it as a placental mammal. This was due to the extreme preponderance of bodily hair. In fact, a single fluke contains about as much body hair by dry mass as 60 adult human males. We should find shelter soon. It's getting dark. Indeed. I just hope we can avoid that beast we saw earlier. The fluth. It appears to be some sort of shelter. I think we can make camp here for the night. We should try. It's getting dark. Alright. Attacked. It's the flu! It's the flu! Oh my god! Die, you beast! <laughs> there have been many public misconceptions about the flu, including a number of hoaxes and alleged sightings, but very few of these have been scientifically validated. For that reason, in order to demystify this, I'm going to put the journal to the test and follow its words exactly. I'm going to retrace the very footsteps that Lewis and Clark took hundreds of years ago in the attempt to discover once and for all definitive proof of this elusive animal. I'm currently driving through the campus of the Overlake School, located in modern-day Redmond. According to recent analysis of the latest journals of Lewis and Clark, this is the area where the historic fluth was last sighted. What was that strange bubba? Oh, God. Did I kill the last fluth? Fortunately, I'm certified in CPR. <laughs> Ah, ah. Ah, it's not working! It's not working! I've killed the last fluke! It's time to conclude our program. Time to seal what shouldn't have been tampered with. Time to move on. Cause I wrote so hard, I can voyage for a long time, oh my god No this ain't a dance floor, go not explore Find that northwest passage for sure Head like a horse, body like a gorilla Haters better shut up cause my rhymes are iller The fluffy taffy, the fluffy taffy, oh, it's the fluffy taffy, the fluffy taffy, the fluffy taffy, the fluffy taffy, William got the fluffy taffy, the fluffy taffy, Mary was the fluffy taffy, fluffy taffy, William Clark, fluffy taffy, fluffy taffy, fluffy taffy, Lewis and Clark, fluffy taffy, fluffy taffy, fluffy taffy. Lost the journal for the tapping. The tapping.